not worried about dying. I hope you're not. I, I passed from death unto life a long time ago. <laughs> Amen? I passed from death unto life. I've already died and I'm alive again. Amen? Amen. <laughs> yeah, people say, oh, one man came up to me one day and said, I'm going to kill you. I said, you can't. He said, why? I said, I'm already dead. <laughs> I'm already dead. <laughs> He said, you're not dead, you're alive. I said, shut up, I'm dead. <laughs> he went away, he didn't know what to do with it. Another guy put a knife up to my throat. I said, are you enjoying yourself? Put a knife right here. I said, oh, that's funny. It's tickles. <laughs> I said, you can't kill me. God ain't giving you permission, I'm not ready yet. I said, you know what's going to happen next? You won't know what to do with your arm. And the Lord froze his arm. Boy, oh boy. Couldn't move it. Couldn't bend it. Couldn't do nothing. What have you done to me? I said, nothing. God did it. <laughs> <laughs> and if you, if you tell the police I did it, I'm going to tell the police you're wrong. And God did it. I never touched you. I never touched you. Get out of here. <laughs> what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon his boy, oh boy, to make me a son of God? Terrific stuff. That we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Some people believe, you know, when we see Jesus, we'll be 33 years of age. I like the thought of that. <laughs> so I'll be going backwards. <laughs> I'm already up over the 70s, so I should be going backwards. Wow, what a thing. 33 when we meet. And if you're not, if you're 25, you're going to be 33. Perfect. They say that's the best time of your life, actually. Between 30 and 40, you're, you're at your strongest. We should be like him. Watch this. We should be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope, here it is, in him, purifieth himself even as he is pure. What's the hope? That I'll be like him. That, that's it. Are you hearing me? That's the one hope of our calling. That I'll be like Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. I'm not interested in being a smart preacher. I, I got rid of that a long time ago. I've always wanted to be like Jesus. Okay, that's what you're supposed to do here tonight. You're supposed to take what you're receiving, hear it, and receive it. Don't be afraid. I'm not going to say anything crazy. Amen. I am crazy, but that's okay. <laughs> but this is what it says. Every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as is pure. I remember preaching this here. He came back to see me again three years later. He came back. He was in the southern part of Russia working as a pastor. He said, I just want to tell you to encourage you because I believed what you shared and the word became so real to my life. I am a pastor today. I have 2,000 Russian people in my church. That happened again in Western Australia in Perth. A brother, all he did, he listened to me for a week in John's Gospel, believed everything he heard. God made him a pastor. He's got 2,000 people in his church too. They must all like 2,000 people. I don't know what there is about 2,000 people. But all you've got to do is believe what God's saying. Hallelujah. It isn't about whether you're smart or whether you're, you know, you've got this kind of degree or the other degree. He that hath this hope in himself 
purifies himself even as he is pure yeah wonderful that I've, I've spent years pondering over some of these things just that phrase every man that hath this hope in him this will keep you pure to be like Jesus you want to be like him yeah I've been in front of some ministers and they've most been absolutely most unlike Jesus I've told them I said you need to get out of the ministry and start getting your life sorted out and people can see Jesus in you that's what we're here for we're not here to be spectacular he's in me to be spectacular amen, amen. he's me in me to be extraordinary amen. amen you know somebody said to me not long ago um, you should retire I said I retired a long time ago he said really you retired yeah I retired I stopped living <laughs> I stopped doing the living that's called retirement I gave my life to Jesus so completely I stopped trying to live he said you shall live because what I live that really means because I live you shall live also it doesn't mean that he lives in heaven at the right hand side of God it's because I give him permission to live my life every day of it I wake up and tell him this is your body this is your life I'm going to be like you and I want you to live your life in me so that I can be like Jesus to men and women. Amen. The safest thing in the world for you and me is to be like him. Amen. Amen. That is the central thing to our calling. I don't care what you can do. I've heard devils casting out all kinds of devils. Devils, yeah, they do. You can't believe it. Devils casting out devils, yeah. Oh, you never believe what goes on. But they're so unlike Jesus, it's not true. I want to be like him. I don't want to be like a, some old grumpy Derek. That's my name, by the way. <laughs> I don't want to. I, I, I know I can be. You know when Jesus told the disciples to go to the other side? Do you remember that? Yeah. yeah? Do you know there's another side to everything in you that is not like Jesus? Yes, sir. Another side. So if you've got some anger in there or some unforgiveness, there's another side to that. And you've got to get to him for that other side in you. And me, I've got to get there too. I've got some funny stuff in me that I was born with through my parents. What do you mean funny stuff? Awkward, difficult, you know, natural. All that rubbish that we're born with. That Jesus has come to take out of me. Amen. Amen. This is the whole essence. One hope of your calling. Jesus, make me like you. Hallelujah. I don't care what I... I don't want to stand in front of God looking like Derek. No. I want him to be able to say, that's my son. He looks like my Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. glory. What do you think being a son of God is all about? It's not all this nonsense that people keep on pressing on all the time. It's character. One of the essence, the thing you'll love it in there, Bishop, is the, the main thing about living by faith is about your character yeah. and my character. It's not that I can believe God for a mansion or, or yeah. any of that. Yeah. It's, it's I can believe God to do things in me that make me a blessing. Yes, sir. You know, Abraham was, was told this right at the very beginning of his life, wasn't he? He said, it, it, he said it, well, it was a few things, but we'll just take one of them. He said, in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed in you what I do inside of you that's what's going to make you a blessing so if I give him permission to make the changes in me they are going to be a blessing to you amen if I go if I if I don't let God make any changes in me I prove to be that the most selfish individual that you will ever meet because I cannot be a blessing to you unless God does something in me yeah. Amen. Yeah. So I'm saying, Lord, if you're saying in your chair, well, I don't need to be changed. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, you don't need to be changed, huh? Crows. I haven't met any Christian who doesn't need to be changed yet. Every Christian needs to be changed. Crisis. But you, here's the word. New birth is a crisis and a process. Yeah. It, once he gets you, he's going to change you. Yeah. Amen. What did I say on, in Cape Town? Something new came in. Oh, salvation 
is planning for my future. Ah, planning for my future. What do I mean by that? Well, planning for everything that God has for my life and everything th that he wants to do in me to make me fit for heaven. I'm not fit for heaven unless he's doing a work inside of me. Amen. So he's blessed you with all spiritual blessings. It's permanent. It's, it's done. Total. But that's got to be worked out in your life. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. He, he that has this hope in himself purifies himself. Biggest thing in the world is to stay pure in this day. You know, I can't. I got a television in my room. I have one down in Cape Town. Disgusting looking thing. I couldn't turn it on in my room in um, Cape Town. I was talking to the wife. I said, "What do you reckon, sweetie? I can't turn the television on." And then she suddenly, she's such a smart one, my wife. I, I need to keep kissing her to get some wisdom out of her. <laughs> And she said, you know why that is, don't you? It's been used for pornography. <laughs> yeah, she said, that television's been used for pornography. And she, my wife knows everything. <laughs> There's something else to live with a woman who can tell you what you don't know, isn't it? <laughs> she's a doctor. A very clever little lady. But she's so fun to be with. He that hath this hope purifieth himself even as he actually that should be a capital H share in the King James is even as he is pure I love that if you want to do a little study dig out in 1 John all the as he is as he is walk in the light as he is in the light in other words you see, purifieth himself even as he is pure Oh, glory. And here's another one, just John. This is all John. In this one little, one little book, as he is, so are we in this world. Yeah, that's calling, isn't it? That's calling. <laughs> oh, man. What a God he is. Amen. Oh, I love, I love, I love listening to myself. That's not being arrogant. I just love listening to myself. Because I don't know what to expect or what to hear and where, where it's all going to come from next. All right, come on, let's, let's have a look. I should have this thing right up here, bro, shouldn't I? Can I have this up here? Would that be all right? Not too, not too far. I don't mean to be troublesome. Just about, just about there. Oh, you are kind. I like you. <laughs> you can be my best friend. <laughs> So what did I say earlier? We're called to know our calling. That's the thing. But I've got to do something about that calling. About what God has really called me for. And I really believe the fundamental hope that we're talking about here. And mentioning this one thing to be like him. Must come for everything else. Amen. That we might be. be we've been predestinated to what? Be conformed to the image of his son. Be like Jesus. Oh man. When's the last time you in your private time with the Lord got on your face and said, Lord, I don't like me. I don't like me. It says, he that hateth his life in this world shall find it. You know? I mean, he doesn't literally mean hate in the wrong sense, but he that totally dislikes the way he is. He that loses his life for my sake shall find it. Wouldn't it be wonderful one day to wake up and find that you're not there? <laughs> you're gone. I mean, I'm serious. He that loses his life for my sake. It, it, you know, one of the things I hate at home, losing the keys to the car. <laughs> Sweetheart, can you find the keys? No, you put them down last. No, I did not. <laughs> Where are the keys? always losing something find them eventually but he that loses his life for my sake it's almost like a sense of disinterested in me disinterested in myself have you abandoned yourself like that yet have you let go of yourself that's the kind of thing that God's talking about that's why it's impossible to be a disciple unless you can come this way your calling very powerful
I don't know whether I'll get through this tonight. I don't know. There's, an, there's more meetings, so we'll have a crack at it again if we don't get through. So what is the Lord trying to say to him, to us all? Well, we all know the Bible is replete with phrases like calling all over it. But there are four little things I want to just drop on you tonight. Maybe I'll just drop them and then later explain as best I can. I don't like the thought that many are called but few are chosen twice in Matthew that verse is one of the contexts in that thing can I just tell you one of the contexts in one of those where many are called but few are chosen it was in the story of a man that turned up at a wedding without the wedding garment oh and everybody was questioning well, how on earth did he get there because you couldn't go to a wedding without the wedding garment it was impossible and he was thrown out he was in there but he was thrown out and you see the Bible talks about garments Revelation talks about the linen garments that they wear and the, what the saints will wear interesting the word linen because there's no sweat with linen isn't it interesting I preached a message in San Francisco some years ago on literally called no sweat <laughs> yeah he's doing everything people say to me I was preaching in, in this huge church in um, where anyway don't matter where and the pastor said are you okay I said what do you mean he said well we're, we're trying to get everything out of you that we can and working you so hard are you all right I said I said I'm not doing it I don't do this work he's a co-laborer with me Hallelujah. amen I'm working with God. If God, He takes a bigger load. I don't worry about what I'm going to say because I'm always aware that He's going to turn up again. So you don't have to worry about who's doing this thing here today called living. It's Him. Now listen to this. Why did this man get thrown out then? No garments. No righteous got right. Bloop. The linen garments in Revelation it says are the righteousness of the saints. What does that mean? we're all my righteous we've got his righteousness I'm I've got his I mean I have his imparted righteousness to me so am I not saved by that no no the the linen garments that they were wearing is called the righteousness of the saints John's the one who opens that up and says he that practices righteousness is righteous not him that believes he's righteous but he that's doing it so the garments represent all the things I've done you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. The garments represent all the things I've done. My righteousness, if I'm going to wear a linen garment called the righteousness of the saints, it's because I've not been preaching to people. I've been doing it. I've been doing it. You understand? I've been doing it. Say, say with me, I want to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to work out what God has worked in. Amen. He's worked a lot of stuff into you already. Amen. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful though? Because, you know, people say, well, you know, they stand on the premise of the word and they say, you know, well, I've got this, I believe this, and I believe the other. But they're not living it. It's like John says, love not in word only, but in word and deed. In practice. Show your love by things you... One of the things that I, I, I worry about with saints is that they're almost afraid to be affectionate one to another anymore. To show care and to show kindness. Need to do more of that. Amen. Need to show affection. I, I love coming here and just hopefully showing you my love for you. Coming from his heart to mine to you. That's all it is. I don't care about anything else. I'm not interested in any other facet of the ministry. But this, that I'd be useful to God in this way. So, we're going to have to look at something here. What is the first thing that comes in the New Testament that is striking about a man's calling? There are four things. When I say men, I'm always sort of talking to the ladies. Don't get f feeling put out, ladies, or anything. It's the way it is in the Bible. Everybody's involved. You came out of us. I always like the story of thinking about Adam getting waking up one day and finding a woman next to him. How she get here? Did she fly in or what? <laughs> the thing is, she came out of him. 
Amen? Isn't that exciting, isn't it? So we're part of each other. We're the, you know, you know the story. You don't. I like the other bit. If you're looking for a wife, go to sleep. <laughs> it's, uh, it's the best way to get a wife. <laughs> if you're looking at the Bible, in Mark chapter 3, in verse 13, it says about Jesus, He goeth up into a mountain, and calleth unto them, oh sorry, unto him, whom he would, and they came to him. That's the one. You want to read that again in King James? He goeth up, verse 13, he goeth up into a mountain, and calleth unto him whom he would. And they came unto him. <clears throat> now this might come as a shock, this next statement, but I can say it because I'm old enough. <laughs> your ministry isn't your calling, not first. 1 Corinthians 1 9. Put 1 Corinthians 1 9 up there if you can do that. 1 Corinthians 1 9. Is it coming up? 1 Corinthians 1 9. God is faithful. Ah. That's a good start, isn't it? There's our word call. Look, look at that. By whom you were called. To what? Fellowship. Into the fellowship of his son Jesus Christ. Do you want me here to say something to you? My ministry is an overflow of my relationship with God. And I know a lot of ministries that are not. They are existing for ministry and not for their relationship with God. Your calling fundamentally is this. Into a relationship with Jesus. Can you just listen to this? This is a bit deep. This is deep. Look, when I say deep, you may not have heard it quite like this before. Jesus Christ died of a broken heart. You understand? They say that when the sword, per uh, sorry, the spear put, pierced his, his side, water and blood came out. Biologically, you will find out that those things that came out of him were a sign that his heart was broken. It was broken because the fellowship that he had known forever had been broken. You understand? Yeah. It was broken. It had to be broken because something had to happen for all humanity. So just imagine just for a moment as Jesus is dying. His heart was broken. The fellowship with his father broken. A breach was made an opening you know why that breach was made so that we go in into into their fellowship hallelujah, hallelujah. it was made so that we could enter into the fellowship of the father and the son now let me just tell you something you'll love this well I will anyway I was in Cyprus preaching to an African uh, pastor there sorry yes he was from South Africa that's right and um I said this, is Jesus has done everything. He's given me everything he is, all his life, all his mind, is everything that's in him, he's given it to me. I don't need a thing that he, does, he hasn't provided. But isn't it funny that when we think about having fellowship with the Father, that's not included. But I'm actually living in his fellowship. That's what John said so remarkably. He said, our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son. So when the breach came, we entered in. I'm in between the Father and then the Son. I'm in their fellowship. Oh, man. It's not about me having fellowship with, with Jesus. It's me being in His fellowship with His Father. Hallelujah. That's the marvel. And you've been created in the death of Jesus to enter that fellowship. Amen. 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 That's your calling. Called in. Yes, is it sir. still up there? It is not called into the fellowship. Oh, I love this thing. God is faithful. Yes, sir. Oh, man. You won't have any question about how faithful he is once you get in here. He's faithful to the very end. Oh, Lord, help me, help me, help me. Aren't you glad you're alive? His fellowship. Our fellowship. Was, oh, I'd love to go into that in more detail, but we can't. It just takes too long. He called them unto himself. 
and they came yeah wonderful when I think about what the Lord has been so good to me over over the years I can I could shout from the housetop it's almost like I haven't had to make things happen it's all in the fellowship it's all somebody in Australia I was in Brisbane and I, I preached in a, in a certain place and I people came rushing up afterwards and they said could you explain what it really means to die to self I said well and I, I wasn't quite expecting um, that question and I remember saying and I, and I thought about it afterwards I said something like jump into the arms of Jesus and you'll know all the death you need to know Hallelujah. he'll put it all to death it's not about me trying to find out how to die it's about me fellowshipping the one who died for me Hallelujah. amen yeah wonderful isn't it oh it's a wonderful thing wonderful thing I always want to say something very unusual to you and I know what I'm saying so don't look at me like I'm a foreigner <laughs> I want to ask you a question. How dead are you? How dead are you? Yeah. You say, I can't be alive until I'm dead. He said, you are dead, Colossians 3, and your life is hid with Christ in God. If that's not a perfect picture of a relationship with Jesus, I don't know. You're dead. Yeah, I'm dead. Gosh, wouldn't it be really lovely if I was... I, I, I mean, there are some parts of me that are not always dead. So you need to get to God to keep this death going on in you. Amen. 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 And what Paul said in 2 Corinthians 4, he said, we carry about in this body the death of the Lord Jesus. I got his death in here. Look, look, inside here. In here. It's, I got his death in me. For what reason? To feel bad? That the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal body Hallelujah. that's what I've got his death for I'm not afraid of that a death I'm not afraid of his death it's the only death in the world that makes any sense there are two deaths in the world I said this over Easter I'll say it to you there are two deaths in the world did you know sin's death and the death of our Lord Jesus two deaths so when God's looking about on the world to think about what to do he, he knew already of course but he's looking down thinking hmm sin's death it's made a real mess of everything, isn't it? So what I'll do is I'll, I'll introduce a new death. A new death. A new death? Yeah, there's a new death in the world. Go on, think about it. I'm letting you let it sinking down into your heart. There's a new death. If you die sin's death, you're dead. You're finished. There's nothing more to it. But the moment you die his death, you're alive. Amen. It's the only death. It's the miracle death of Jesus. The, the miracle of the cross is not, or rather, the, the miracle of all that happened there in, the, in Jesus' life was not the resurrection. It was his death. His death is the most powerful thing the world has ever seen. Do you know what happened when he died? He was put to death in the flesh, Peter said. He was put to death in the flesh and what? Made alive in the spirit. He was not dragged down to hell by Satan and messed up with. He'd be very careful of that teaching. That is wrong. He got all the victory on that cross. Yes, he died totally victorious. Amen. Amen. No question about it. My next book after the sequel to the faith book is called The Amazing Cross. God has shown me things about Calvary that have blessed my socks off. That cross, you've got a brood on it. Do you know what brood? You've got, to, you've got to stay at the source. The source of blessing is Calvary. Yeah. Amen. It's where everything's coming from. Amen. Stay close to the cross. It won't hurt you. It'll put to death what you don't want to live with. Amen. It'll put to death what you don't have to live with. There's a lot of stuff in us by our first birth that's got to be zapped. If you want to call it zapped. I don't know. That's not a very good word. Is it? <laughs> oh, Lord, help us. You're too special to be cheap and die to the grace of God. God's trying to do something. His cross will make something of you. His death will do something to you. And you will be so grateful. The moment you taste 
what it feels like to be free of self, you'll be utterly amazed. You'll have to keep on coming to the Lord for it. It won't happen once because the flesh doesn't die. It hangs on. You can mortify it. The word mortify means to destroy by neglect. But everything is all coming back to Jesus. It's all coming back to Jesus. I love him. I love him. I want to love him so much that I can scream. I wake first thing in the morning every day at 3 o'clock. He knows my clock and wakes me just to hear my voice. And if I miss one, because I occasionally do because of traveling, because I'm so tired, I hear him say, I miss you. I miss you, Derek. I'm not anything but for the grace of God. I said something years ago, and I still believe it in my heart. You can make God do something if you want it bad enough. When I wanted the Holy Spirit, I met with some people that knew Smith Wigglesworth. And you know Smith Wigglesworth was a very powerful man. And I remember that I sought the Lord. I got up. I said, if this is right, if I need to be baptized in the Spirit, then please, Lord, you, you've got to show me. And this Pentecostal woman who knew Smith Wigglesworth, she, she spoke in tongues. I hated speaking in tongues. I said to the Lord, I don't want none of that nonsense. <laughs> She used to speak in tongues with her, her mouth filled with scrambled egg and it went everywhere. <laughs> I said, if that's speaking in tongues, I don't want that. Her, her scrambled egg went all over the kitchen. But, she, but God finally moved on my life and I, I, I got up, I was in Bible school and I, I got up at four in the morning, every morning in those early days and I sought the Lord. I said, Lord, please help me. I don't know anything. I don't feel like I know anything. You know nothing without the Holy Ghost. Amen. You don't know anything. Amen. I do hope you, you get this, um, the book that I've written on, on the Holy Spirit. It's a very unusual title because the Lord gave it to me one day, a, a special revelation. And you've got to read the book. I'm not going to tell you what it's, it's about. It's called The Holy Spirit, The First Preacher. He had to preach, the, I'll tell you, he had to preach the first message to make sure it was uncorrupted. That was Peter's mouth, but it wasn't Peter. He said, we preach the Holy, with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. Yeah, you got that right. We preach with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. If you can get this into your heart, everything is by the Spirit. And I said recently, and I've said it, I've said it just again uh, a few times that you will never minister the word until you minister the spirit. Yeah, he that Paul didn't say he that ministers the word. He said he that ministers the spirit. If a man ministers the spirit, he's minister. He'll minister the word. All right. So if I preach for seven hours, like I do sometimes in Russia, people don't remember all that. But I'll tell you what: the spirit's been getting inside of them, and the spirit's been ministering Jesus to them, not the words. You see, worship is not about words. It uses worship, but it's more. Uh, it uses words, but it's more than words. Worship is not the, the things I sing and the words I say. It's more. It just uses words, but it's got to be spirit and life. Amen. Yeah. Oh, you're a lovely lot. You're alive. You're alive for a reason. I'm not doing very well here tonight. I'm not doing very well. I feel I'm doing, well, I'm, I'm my worst critic. I'm, I'm not saying all that I should say, but I've got so much inside of me, I don't know when to stop. <laughs> so maybe I'll have to continue some of it tomorrow. But I want to say to you, how long have I been going, bro? I, I'm not good at clock. What, are, what time do you want to leave? Eh? Are we okay? Okay, good. Oh, that's all right. Then I can, I can make it part two tomorrow. Called firstly to him. Amen. You haven't got to worry about where you're going after that. Once everything's locked into a relationship with Jesus, everything begins to take place. Not about success, just to recapture, recapture the thought. Calling is not about success, but about significance. He was not successful, but definitely significant. Still talking about him. Still preaching Jesus. He made an impact. 
What are they going to say when you're dead? Oh, glad to see he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> what are they going to say about you? Anything, anything good to talk about? Yeah, well, only because you've had a relationship with Jesus. That's the only thing that makes you, talking about you, any worth anything. Do you understand? Are you hearing me? Are you listening to me tonight? I'm going to come and get you if you don't. I'm going to get you. Isn't it wonderful to be wonderful? <laughs> Did you? Isn't it wonderful to be wonderful? Yeah, you're wonderful. I was in Mal uh, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia some years ago, and I was preaching on how precious we all are. And this little lady sitting just right there, she wept like a baby. And I got her out of the meeting. I said, why are you crying so much? I've never felt wonderful. Never felt precious in my life. My dad, I got a dad, and he, he didn't know how to really love. He didn't know how to show it. My mum was a right lover. But my dad didn't show love. and But it never had a problem with me. I, when he went a little crazy and got angry, my mum said, I can't believe how quickly you forgive him. I said, he's my dad. I, got it. I want to forgive him. Anyway, my dad didn't know the Lord until he's 96 now. All his marbles are working. And at 84, he gave his life to Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? But he was clueless about loving. I had no idea. I told him. I said, you know why you had a problem sh showing love, Dad? Because your father had a problem showing love. <laughs> he didn't know how to show it. To save his teeth, he didn't know how to show it. <laughs> hey, talking about saving your teeth, my wife said, tell him this joke. When all the lights go out, all the Africans just need to smile because all the lights have come on. <laughs> the wonderful teeth that you guys have. <laughs> Especially you. <laughs> all the lights will come on when you smile. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wonderful. Call into fellowship. Make that your number one thing. Amen. Wherever you're going after that will be determined by that called into fellowship, called them unto himself, oh dear, just to be with him, just to know him, i got to shut up, okay, Father, let's pray, let's pray, let's, let's thank the Lord tonight. Your I know you have been blessed by this powerful message, come and join us in 38 Honey Street, Corner Taro, Johannesburg, South Africa. For more information, you can contact Bishop Franco Gagba on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and you can watch more videos on YouTube.